Well, I, you know, I, I was up in the offices of Rolling Stone today earlier, and I had, had this kind of weird admission. Because uh, I've lived pretty boldly, you know, I've, I've taken my shots, you know, and um, it's because if, I feel like you can, you know, it's, it's not Vietnam. What's the risk of doing what you want to do in life? You know, you, you take a chance, and, and so I have. It. But actually, when I was up there, um, I had to say that I had been worried about New York a little bit. You know, there's this idea of, um, I mean, I know that people think of me a bit as a cowboy. I know that, um, I know I'm the baseball guy. I know I'm the, you know, I know I'm real kind of American and not that New York isn't, but New York is kind of a, a bigger kind of international important place and I always wonder if I was thought of as a bumpkin, you know, a little bit. And I'm just telling you internally. So I was worried that, um, that we would, could, would be dismissed early on, so I avoided coming here uh, simply because I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to feel the sting of rejection. And um, they scheduled this without me knowing it. And I said, really? Really this time? And the guy said, really? So um, we came, and uh, and I was I was wrong. Maybe I was right to wait to come here, but I was wrong to worry about how we were received because it was it was it was even. Well, John and I met in an acting class. Um, gosh, a long, long time ago. Neither one of us had any money. It was down in the L.A. River that doesn't flow, and. Um, and uh, we were, we were, we'd set up an acting class down there, everybody that didn't have money. It was in a chemical plant and we built a little stage and I made a lot of friends under John Doe of X and a lot of different people uh, who were, everybody was crossing back and forth between acting and music. You know, we just wanted to play, we wanted to act and no one would pay us to do either. So we decided that we would make our own class and no one had to pay. Out of that group, I found Michael Blake who ended up writing Dance of the Wolves. I found my longtime partner, Jim Wilson, who for 20 years we made movies together, won a couple of Oscars, and Michael won an Oscar. And, and I continue to have friends that, out of that group, you know, come and be in the movies. We go watch them play. But John and I began to flirt with music because I, I really was serious about going back into music. At the same time, my career was starting to gather the smallest of momentums. And, um, I think I told the story today of being, you know, hit pretty hard at one point over a song we made an enormous amount of money for. I guess if I'd had a tougher skin, and I actually do, I guess I thought I don't, I don't want to subject myself to this extra thing, music and movies. And so I just concentrated on the movies. And uh, it was interesting that I would come all the way back. You know, Roving Boy didn't live very long. I wanted it to. Um, but I was the one that pulled the plug on it. When it comes to the Hatfield McCoys, I was living it quite a bit with the, because it's very epic. It's gonna be on, you know, over Memorial Weekend, it's gonna play three nights in a row. It's gonna cover seven, almost eight hours. And so I was really absorbed in, in, in you know, I would, I would watch myself age right in front of myself on the mirror with the, as the beard would go on. And, um, you know, I think whether we want to admit or not, we measure ourselves by some of our Western heritage. We wonder in our hearts if we're tough enough to, to stand up to that. We, we wonder if we would be willing and able to arbitrate our own problems as opposed to having a lawyer do it now or your PR firm or your agent. You know, back then you had to, you had to live by your wits and you, and you had to have a, a, a certain amount of ruthlessness in you. And so, Sometimes I find myself thinking about that. Was I, how would I have fared?